Yeah, uh, regarding the precipitation, this is our first um, topic uh, after the introduction to hydrology. So uh, as you already know from the hydrological cycle, uh, there are a lot of type of precipitation, not only rainfall, but also um, snow, hail. Uh, they are also part of precipitation, but here, uh, because we are on the tropical country, of course, we only focus on the rainfall. We're, we're not focusing on snow or hail because it's, uh, it's not too uh, significant for our hydrological cycle in our country. But if you study hydrology in other countries, for example, in the Europe or uh, in America, you will learn about the uh, how the snow melt and how the hail happen, not only about the uh, rainfall. But here, the uh, precipitation that we will talk about is mostly about the rainfall. And as you know, now, now we are on the uh, rainy season, right? Um, in precipitation, there are um, a lot of types of precipitation. Now we are focusing on rainfall. And uh, in the rainfall, there is also one uh, aspect that is important. Uh, it's called effective rainfall, or um, you can name it with RF, uh, RS uh, in rainfall, F is the effective. So effective rainfall is the amount of rainfall that plants can directly use during their growth period. So this is the uh, water from the rainfall that is used uh, by the plants uh, in their um, growth period. Uh, the amount of effective rainfall in the crop area depends on the intensity of the rain, land topography, uh, soil processing system, and plant growth rates. So usually the effective rainfall is um, smaller than the um, actual rainfall because uh, some of the actual rainfall um, not used by the plants, but uh, they are maybe flowing uh, in the surface and um, as you as you already seen in the uh, hydrological cycle, uh, some of the water from the rainfall uh, did uh, went to the um, other uh, water bodies such as uh, river or lakes or maybe infiltrates into the soil. Uh, not all the uh, precipitation or rainfall is used by the uh, plants. But the uh, precipitation, which is used by the plants to grow, is called effective rainfall. Here we have the data for the rainfall. Uh, so if you uh, get data of the rainfall from the uh, Badan Meteorology uh, and Geophysica, PMK, PMKG in Indonesia, uh, there are a lot of type of data um, of the uh, rainfall. Uh, usually it is daily, it's daily rainfall. Uh, it consists of the height of the rain, R. Uh, the unit is usually mm, millimeter, or sometimes centimeters, but in other countries, uh, it can be inches. So um, here in Indonesia, we, we, we use the uh, metric uh, units, but some of uh, some of country didn't use the metric units, they use the uh, inch and um, uh, not use the uh, metric units. Uh, for the duration P, um, usually it's in uh, minutes or hour. For the intensity, usually it's millimeter per minute or millimeter per hour or millimeter per day or inches per minute inches per hour or inches per day. And there are also frequency of the rainfall is uh, in a uh, unit of the years. So uh, you can like calculate the um, rainfall which happen uh, every five years, the amount of the rainfall which happen every five years. Uh, usually it is um, smaller than the amount of, uh, of the rainfall 
which is happen every um, 10 years or so. The uh, frequency of the uh, rainfall, it is also uh, used as the, um, when you, when you want to design the amount of the rainfall for your hydrological structure, uh, you use the uh, frequency of maybe in 50 years or uh, it's for the uh, dam or the wear. Usually it is used a uh, bigger um, frequency than the uh, rainfall frequency which is used in, um, for example, smaller structures such, such as um, drainage channel or um, irrigation channel, something like that. And there's also rain gauge. Uh, so the type of the rain gauge is uh, two types, uh, manual and automatic. Here we have the example of daily precipitation data. Usually, the uh, daily precipitation data is shown uh, as the table. Uh, the date is depends on the date of the month. Usually, it is until uh, 31, but it is cut here because uh, I just copy and paste it from the Excel. Uh, it should be until 31, the date. And there's also the name of the station, uh, the code of the station, and the location of the uh, station, the elevation, and which watershed is that, and then in which uh, region is that. This is the uh, region and the uh, watershed of the uh, station. So uh, usually uh, there are more than one station in one big area of watershed. So you have to like uh, calculate the average of the rainfall from uh, the three uh, stations. But if there are only one station, you can use the uh, data directly. Here we have the uh, rainfall, uh, the height of the rainfall in millimeter. Uh, as you can see in the gen in January, there are rainfall in the second, uh, fourth, a little bit of rain, seven also. There are uh, um, average rain in uh, the eighth January and twelfth January, and so on. From here, we can also calculate the average rainfall, which is happen daily. So we can. Uh, um, calculate the uh, mean, the mean data. We can also know uh, which one is the uh, maximum rainfall in this month, for example, or maximum rainfall of the year. Here we have like the year of 2009. So we can see from the uh, data that uh, shown here, the maximum precipitation in one year is uh, Daily, it can reach. Uh, here we have the biggest one is the 95 millimeter uh, per day. So that's the maximum. But for the average, you have to calculate. And there are also periodic precipitation. Uh, as you know, one month consists of 31 days maximum. So the uh, periodic precipitation is uh, like, uh, how much rain happened in every 10 days, for example, here. So you have to calculate the uh, amount of rainfall in every 10 days. You have to like um, total it. And then you can see uh, which, which periodic has the biggest uh, rainfall here. For example, it's the third period of February, for example. This is the highest. Uh, precipitation total. And you can also see here in June uh, until July, from the second period of June until the second period of July, there are no rain. And from the first period of August until the last period of September, there's also no rain. Here uh, you can uh, see. But uh, 
if you want to make the periodic precipitation, you have to know the daily precipitation first. And after that, you can calculate uh, by the day. Um, for example, in first periodic for uh, the date of 1 until 10, and then after that, 11 until 12. Uh, sorry, 11 until 20, and then after that, uh, 21 until 30 or 31. Uh, there's also maximum and monthly precipitation here. Um, for the maximum, for the maximum, you you will uh, you have to calculate uh, no cal not calculate but you have to look for the highest number of the uh, precipitation. But for the uh, monthly precipitation, you have to. Um, for the monthly precipitation, you have to uh, total it from uh, the first date until the last date in this month. For example, here we have in January, the maximum precipitation is 50. So there is like one day in January, which uh, rains so heavily uh, until 50 millimeters. But the total of the rainfall in January is only 209. So you can see here that the, uh, <clears throat> the maximum uh, rainfall is uh, quite different with the uh, monthly rainfall. So there are uh, a lot of other rainfall that happen in uh, the other day, uh, other than the uh, maximum daily precipitation. Number of rainy days. Of course, uh, it's not raining every day in one month. So you can calculate the number of rainy days also from here. We have like 19 days of uh, rainy days in January. From here, we can also see that the um, number of rainy days is decreasing. So it means that, ah, yeah, so the, rain, the rainy season is coming to an end in July because there are only two days of rainfall in July. There's no rain at all in August and September. Yeah, from this, we can also see which one uh, is the rainy season, which one is uh, the um, uh, sunny season. To get uh, all of that, uh, we, we need a uh, rain gauge. Here uh, we have um, actually the MKG already used the automatic one. So manual rain gauge is used uh, very, very long time ago. Uh, this is only for the uh, knowledge. Like uh, you, you, can, um, you can see the differences between the manual rain gauge and the automatic rain gauge. Here is the sketch of manual rain gauge. For the manual rain gauge, um, it is located in one of the uh, rain station. And here we have like for the daily precipitation data, we have to name the station, the name of the station. And usually uh, the name of the station is uh, not so different with the name of the region. Here we have the region of Banyu Bukhi. And the name of the station is also Banyu Putih except if the, in one region uh, there are more than one uh, station, it also can happen. So the name of the station will be different. Here uh, we have uh, manual rain gauge. It is located in one of the stations in one in one area, and then the the rainfall is um, calculated with the, um, the uh, here we have the, uh, some of the calculator. Here we have the scale of the volume from this one. Uh, if the rain happen, the rain can uh, enter this uh, side of the rain gauge. And then we can uh, calculate the, um, the height of the rain by using this tube. And then after that, we know the volume, and then uh, we can we can uh, calculate the height of the rainfall by dividing the volume with the um, 
the area of this thing. So we know the uh, height of the rainfall in millimeters. That's the manual one. But uh, now we are using the automatic uh, one. No, not we, but uh, BMKG use the automatic rain choice. Uh, it is also located in each uh, station, rainfall station. The measurement will carry out more than one day per week. So um, it, it should be every day. But yeah, you know, the weakness of um, everything in our country is the data. Because uh, sometimes we don't have the data for uh, every day. But at least we have like one uh, data in one week. So we can still make the um, periodic uh, rainfall uh, data. Here we have the several types of automatic uh, rain gauge. There are a um, few, few types of automatic rain gauge, but, but the principle is not so different with the, um, the manual one. But the differences here, we don't have to calculate uh, manually with, um, for example, with tube, uh, like in the previous one. We already, uh, we already have the data by uh, using this uh, machine. From here, uh, we have the sketch of waiting bucket type uh, of rain gauge. There are uh, usually three types of the rain gauge, waiting bucket, float type, automatic rain gauge, and tipping bucket type uh, rain gauge. Uh, the waiting bucket is not so different with the uh, typing bucket. Um, here we have uh, in waiting bucket, uh, the rainfall is coming in uh, from this area uh into this bucket and then we have the weighting scale here and from the weighting scale we can uh we can draw the graph using the pen here automatic pen and then from here from the graph we can see um the height of the rainfall which has happened here there's also a siphon uh, rain gauge. Uh, this is the sketch of the siphon rain gauge. Uh, the principle is similar, but there is siphon here. So uh, if the water is too too high, higher than the uh, tip of the siphon here, the water will uh, go out from here. So the 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 crab, um, the pan of the crab. Uh, will uh, also calculate the amount of the water coming in uh, from the rainfall. Uh, here, the rain enters the funnel and carried into the reservoir. Uh, as the result of the input of the rain water, the water rises and the boy also rises and then recording pan also rises. So. The recording pen draw the crab here in the paper crab. And when the water level reaches the pen, the pen in the sip one here, uh, and the rainwater still enters, uh, the water in the reservoir will come out through the sip one. And um, the water will come out from here and will drop and um, and the recording pan is also dropped. So until the container is, uh, is empty. Uh, if the rain continues, the water level in the reservoir will rise again, and then the recording pan will uh, rise as well. So uh, we can calculate it using this uh, graph. This is the graph that um, produced by the uh, automatic rain gauge. Apart from the, side, the rise and fall of the note taking pen, graph paper also rotates around the vertical axis. And this graph paper rotates according to the clockwise motion. And it, is, it can be changed once a week. From this graph, uh, we can uh, obtain the height of the rain and its duration. In um, Here we can see it is in in one hour. Mm, 
uh, no, one box is uh, equal to two hours. And we can see the duration is in the X axis and the height of the rainfall is in the Y axis. Um, for example, here we have uh, the duration of the rainfall. Uh, the height is uh, two and a half millimeters in, uh, as you can see here, four hours, four hours, four hours, almost 12 hours. And then the rainfall is increasing. Um, and after that, it is con constantly happening. In, um, for example, here we have uh, six hours yeah, or so. And then we, we have, uh, if, if we have the uh, constant of uh, rainfall here, it means the, um, the rainfall didn't happen. Like the uh, reservoir is constant. So there is nothing going uh, inside the reservoir. It means that there is no rain. But if the uh, grab is increasing, means something coming into the reservoir, right? So uh, it means uh, there is rainfall here, um, um, almost like two millimeters height. And uh, here we have like maybe one hour duration or so. Yeah. And from here, we can, all, we can, we can also know the uh, duration of the rainfall and the height of the uh, rainfall. And uh, where to install the rain gauge? So the rain gauge is located in the rain uh, station, right? So uh, where to locate the rain, sta rain station is not that uh, easy because sometimes there are a lot of um, area that uh, the area is so big, but it has only one uh, rain, rainfall station. Why? Maybe because of the uh, requirements, it's not uh, met. Some of the requirements are um, explained here. The first one is avoid the influence of the wind uh, or tide at a certain haze. And there is all uh, the, the location also has to be barrier free. Uh, for example, here, if we want to um, install the ring, ring gauge here, for example, it has to be barrier free, the um, bigger than uh, two times H. Two times H, uh, this is the, um, uh, this is the barrier here. For example, we have like a big building with uh, the height of H. And then we want to install the rain, ga rain gauge. In which distance we have to install that uh, rain gauge is um, have to be more than two times the height of the uh, building. This is the requirements in 14 countries. But uh, there are seven countries with uh, the requirements of the uh, bigger than H. So this uh, distance has to be bigger than the height of the building. Or there is also uh, requirements regarding uh, the standard of WMO. It is the uh, bigger than 4H. So uh, at least we have to... Um, we have to um, met the requirements of the uh, bigger than age so that our uh, rain gauge can be installed here. If there is a um, tree, tree is also considered as a barrier. So if there is tree or building, you have to see um, the height of the building of, or of the tree and then you can calculate uh, the distance uh, of our in gauge um, from the tree and from the uh, building so that it can be uh, barrier free. It has to be installed on flat ground, not on the mountainous area. And it has to be protected close to observers 
That's why it is usually located near the uh, office of the PMKG, and it is uh, it is it is um, met the uh, technical requirements. So the requirements is um, the most important one is the barrier free because uh, if it's not barrier free, uh, for example, if it is too close to the tree or too close to the building, this rain gauge will not be um, calculate the rainfall properly. And this is some of the world rainfall data for comparison. Uh, because it is different between uh, the rainfall in our region uh, with another region. For example, usually the country is located in the equator line. Equator, yeah, equator line. Uh, has um, rainfall with amount of one, one, 1,500 1, until 3,000 millimeters per year. But the uh, um, rainfall in the um, region uh, not so close to the equator, like uh, with latitude of 30 until 40, it has um, smaller rainfall data in one year. No, not rainfall, data, rainfall height in one year. It's uh, 400 until 800 millimeter per year. And so with the latitude more than 70, it is near the North and South Pole. It is, uh, it's uh, become uh, smaller. Uh, it's around 12, 200 millimeter per year. But this is the normal, um, normal amount. But sometimes there are also uh, countries which is so uh, tropical or so dry, so um, or in the rainy season it is so wet, uh, but in the uh, hot season or sunny season it is so dry, so that the rainfall data is uh, higher than the um, usual data. For example, here we have India with um, amount of the rainfall ten. 1,800 millimeter per year. This is only in a particular region. It's not in the whole India, it's like this, but this is only the particle, particular region, which is maybe this region is usually in, it is in the, um, it is flooding in uh, rainy season because it has so, uh, so high uh, rainfall data. And uh, there is also Colombia here. Colombia, Buena Ventura in Colombia. It has two thousand three hundred ten millimeter per year. Uh, compared to Malang, um, our neighbor city, uh, it has uh, Malang has usually two thousand around two thousand millimeter per year of uh, rainfall. So you can imagine how big this uh, rainfall will be in uh, in a year. Um, it can be that it, this region has rainfall in almost every day, or maybe uh, it has rainfall in uh, most of the months, but uh, with the with big amount of uh, rain. There's also Tehran in Iran. Um, if you know uh, Iran, it is um, it is such a, a dry country, uh, rarely rarely raining in the uh, in this area. It has also a lot of uh, like uh, desert. That's why the rainfall is also uh, quite small. Here we have. 220 millimeter uh, per year. To present the rainfall data, there are also uh, a lot of uh, type of 
uh, rainfall data presentation. There are three types of the rainfall data presentation. The first one is in the table. Uh, second one is using diagram. And the third one is using graph. Um, from the uh, picture, you already see this one is the uh, rainfall data presentation using table. Uh, as I already showed you in the previous um, slide also. And this one is the uh, rainfall data presentation in the table, uh, sorry, in the diagram. Here is the part. And the, this is the uh, rainfall data presentation uh, in the form of uh, graph. In the table form, usually um, it consists of the maximum daily rainfall, monthly rainfall, uh, or annual rainfall. For example, for the daily rainfall, we have to uh, write the date and the rainfall of the date. And for the monthly rainfall, we have to calculate uh, in each month, uh, the total of the rainfall is um, this big. For the uh, maximum daily rainfall, usually it consists of in one year, um, which, one, which one is the biggest uh, rainfall which happened in one day in such a year. For example, here we have 1990. In 1990, the maximum daily rainfall is 180, which is mean there is one day in the year 1990, which is raining heavily uh, with amount of 180 millimeters. There is also annual rainfall here. The annual rainfall is the total of the rainfall, which is happened in one year. For example, here we have in 1990, total of the rain that happened is 2,341 uh, 2, millimeters. In the diagram form, um, usually it is presented in unit, unit diagram depends on uh, its need. For example, here we can present it in the daily maximum rainfall. You can also uh, use the diagram line or uh, bar diagram. It depends on uh, its necessary. For example, uh, how can we change the uh, rainfall data from the table into the diagram? Here we have the rain occurs for 70 minutes, uh, duration of 70 minutes. Here you can see the total of this um, T is uh, should be uh, 70 minutes. And here we have the uh, height of the rainfall. From this data, we can draw the diagram. Uh, from the zero until 50, we got the 20 millimeters uh, rainfall height. And then after that, from the T15 until 25, because it has 10 uh, minutes duration, we got the uh, 30 millimeters rainfall and so on until the last one, the um, 65 until 70 uh, minutes, the, rains, the rain occurs for the height of 15 millimeters. Here, we can draw it like this. Um, the, the intensity can also be drawn. Um, we, uh, at first, we only draw the height of the rainfall, the R, but the intensity is the uh, key height of the rainfall divided by the duration. So the intensity is the height of the rainfall in one hour. So it has to be divided with the duration uh with the unit of hour because it's millimeter per hour so we here we have the uh duration uh of 15 minutes of the rainfall of 20 millimeters how uh, uh 
uh, how about if the uh, rainfall in 20 minutes, uh, no, in 20 millimeters happen in one uh, hour. So it should be uh, multiply with uh, four because uh, here we have 20, 20 millimeters in 15 minutes. So in one hour, we will have the uh, 80 millimeters. Uh, that's, that's called a uh, hydrograph. So hydrograph is the intensity uh, diagram, the rainfall intensity diagram. So the x uh, axis uh, would be the duration in minutes or an hour. Uh, and here we have the uh, intensity as y axis in millimeter per hour. So the rainfall of uh, 80 millimeter per hour happens in 15 minutes. And then after that, in 10 minutes, we got the uh, rainfall of 180 millimeter per hour. And then here we have in 20 minutes, so yeah, 20 minutes, we got the rainfall intensity of 75 millimeter per hour. So the difference is only the uh, y axis because at first we use the rainfall as the y axis, but here we use the intensity of the rainfall. Uh, I think this is the last one. Rainfall data presented in the graph form. Uh, it's not so different with the diagram form, but in general, in the uh, graph forms uh, are generated directly uh, by using the data points. So from the each point, the line can be drawn as a graph. And it's all, it's also can be presented as a cumulative rainfall. So the cumulative rainfall would be um, the rainfall in the previous uh, time duration. Um, it is uh, calculated with the rainfall in the uh, present uh, duration. For example, here we have uh, from, from 15 uh, minutes, uh, and then after that, we calculate in 25 minutes. We have to um, we have to uh, total the rainfall because it is the cumulative rainfall. So it becomes bigger and bigger, and the biggest one will be in the uh, last uh, duration. Uh, I think uh, that's all for today. So um, actually, there are still uh, more to learn about precipitation. Uh, we will talk about it uh, in our next meeting. Uh, is there any question from you? Uh, I will review a little bit about today's uh, class also in the next meeting so that you can uh, understand it more clearly. Uh, I hope uh, you can um, 